Good morning, everybody. MG here. MG Covers bringing you a brand new sports handicapping video. Title of this video, Strategies to Account for Variance in Major League Baseball. This video is going to help you with your handicapping for Major League Baseball. Extremely difficult sport to handicap. Before we get into that, as always, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, greatly appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Ton of playlists on my YouTube channel, so if you subscribe, you'll get access to that, and you can see all those. Learn a lot about sports handicapping. If you follow me on Instagram, you get a ton of nuggets related to sports betting. I put a lot of information out on my storyline on Instagram. Uh, Twitter has the same screen name. That's MG Covers, Covers spelled with a Z. All right, with that out of the way, let's dive into it and talk about strategies to account for variance. I want to define variance. Uh, there's some sports betting. Uh, you can get real deep into this, but the simple, basic understanding of variance is that it's variance basically means unpredict. It's unpredictable. So there is a lot of there is a an unpredictable element that exists in Major League Baseball, unique to Major League Baseball, as opposed to other sports um, that's my opinion but also some facts to back that up as well so what we're going to talk about is some strategies to account for that variance and the very first strategy number one is lowering unit size what i mean by that if you're new to the channel you've heard me talk about what uh risking no more than one unit per day and let's just break this down so if you wager a hundred dollars that's a common uh, unit size for a lot of people, you would wager one tenth unit per play. So instead of wagering a hundred dollars on each play, you would only wager ten dollars per play. So the benefit of that would be if you went on an 0 and 10 run at only wagering ten dollars per play, you would only be down one unit. Now, people will argue, well, you're not going to make any money that way. Well, it will take longer to make money is probably the correct way to word that. And if you would were to wage your full units and you go 0 and 10, you're down 10 units, you're not recovering. The season is over. You'll be, you'll be fighting to get out of the hole for the entire year. So that's why I don't recommend uh, that strategy. So that's one way. Now, the second uh, strategy is to play volume to go with the variance. Now, I'm going to give you an example of that. So what, what we know about uh, Major League Baseball is that, like I said at the beginning of this video, there's a lot of variance. It's unpredictable. So one strategy would be to play with the variance, right? And if you remember, those of you that, even if you're a client or not a client, you follow me on Instagram, we had a lot of success with the NHL totals model. So what I would do is each day I would send out the totals play with volume, and it was advantageous and profitable to play all the plays with value as opposed to handicapping handicapping those games down to a couple plays because we realized that model was really good, so it was better to just play the plays as is. So that's kind of this strategy as well where you're playing volume. So these were the first cut plays from my model from yesterday. And first cut plays, all that means is plays with value. So we had Detroit first game, Detroit second game, San Fran, Baltimore, Cincinnati, and Washington. And the way that I kind of teach and play is favoring the underdog side. So in these six games, it went three and three. So playing all dogs, that was profitable. The games that won were San Fran, Detroit, and Cincinnati. So let's take a look at that so we can see it. Um, San Francisco, and, and again, this is a great point. This was uh, extra innings game, and these are basically coin flip games once they get into extra innings. Philadelphia could have easily won that one. San Fran won. You come over here, Cincinnati, Boston, <laughs> same deal there. Uh, Boston could have easily won that one. And then uh, Detroit's second game, did I skip? Yeah, so that was a 120 dog, 130 dog, and a 136 dog. So, you know, that's one way to do it. Now, the reason I don't think that strategy is best when it comes to uh, Major League Baseball is simply because that variance, I believe, in my opinion, will eventually catch up with you and go the other direction. Because easily, you know, you look at that card, that could have easily, whoops, that was the wrong one. I mean, you could have easily, you know, lost that um, Cincinnati easily lost the San Fran. And so then, you know, 
that's the, that's the problem with playing with the with the variance in Major League Baseball, in my opinion. So that brings us to the next strategy. Final one would be play extremely low volume to take the variance out. Limit action to only two plays per day. And I'm going to show you an example of that would be from, this is from 528. Now, I love this strategy where you only have two plays per day. They're both dogs. So in this strategy, this example, you only have to win one of these to be profitable for the day. So Detroit 149, I think this was a loss, and Baltimore was a win on this day. This was the plays I had. So that was a profitable day. Now, the second benefit to play in this way, and this is I really like this, is because each day, if you know you're only going to play two plays per day, that builds confidence. So because you know you have a structure to your wagering, you know for that day, hey, I'm only going to play two plays. So you're going to try to play – the best two plays that you have. Now, you will hear a lot of chatter amongst sharps, uh, professionals, sometimes amateurs, where you hear, hear people say, well, hey, just play the best play for that day um, to make it simple. The reason I, I think playing two plays each day as opposed to playing one play each day is because of the variance. One play is too small. And let me give you an example of that, a real-life situation uh, this was back on 527. We played Houston here. Uh, I think we had them on run line. I can't remember exactly what it was. Verlander was on the mound. Houston in good form. Uh, we had Houston as a favorite. Seattle was in bad form. And what happens? Verlander lays an egg in the first inning, uh, gets rocked, gives up four runs, and then the game's over. So if you have just one play, I think that's too little volume. And, and that variance will actually get you and that got you in that situation. That was a terrible way to express it. But that's basically what it is. So I think the better strategy would be to have two, it limit it to two plays. My point is two plays would be better than one play because it takes out that, you know, takes out that variance. So, again, just a review for this uh, strategies to count for variance. Lower your unit size. I uh, can't stress this enough. Uh, again, this will protect you from going into the hole deeper. So limit your plays down to one tenth unit per play. That's just an example. Uh, you can play with volume, meaning you if you have six plays that you you like, you could play all those plays. That's one strategy. Um, I think it will be difficult to have an over day that way, meaning like if you have six plays with baseball that you like, I think it would be difficult to go 0-6 um, because of the variance, but I don't like that as well as the strategy where you're playing extremely low volume to take the variance out. And one final point, it just now I just now remember this. If you go back to today's, this example I showed you here with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I think this is a really good point. Can't believe I almost missed it. So that was six plays. Let's say for, what day was that? That was, let's see, the 30, that was yesterday. So six plays, and there were a total of one, two, well, let's just pull up my model here. So there were a total of 16 plays yesterday. So we pull out our handy-dandy calculator. So if you played six plays, and there are a total of 16 plays, in essence, what you're saying is there's val value in 38% of the lines the books made for Major League Baseball yesterday. There's no way. <laughs> that means you're saying almost half of the lines have value, and that's just not the case. That would mean on a Saturday for college basketball when there's 100 games uh, times point thirty eight that there's value in 38% of the college basketball games on a Saturday. There's no way. So just logically thinking through that, you can see and come to the conclusion that that's just too many plays. You're not going to have an edge that way. Whereas if you look at their 16 plays from yesterday, if you play two of those, you're only playing 13. There's you know value in 13% of the volume for Major League Baseball. That's more realistic. So it just makes a lot of sense. Um, 
to play low volume with Major League Baseball. So that being said, if you want access to my power rankings uh, that you see here, uh, $49.95 per month. Those come out every day before 10 a.m. each day. We also have NBA Finals going on as well as NHL Finals and soccer. And don't forget, we'll have football season just around the corner. Uh, you also get access to all of my coaching videos. I put out a ton of content on handicapping uh, baseball. have a new concept called a favorite concept. I just released that video yesterday. Clients have access to that. If you want access to everything I just mentioned, in addition to all my plays, that's $99 per month. And if you want to join for an entire year, you get access to everything on the site. It's a great way to learn about sports betting. That's $4.99 for the entire year. You save about $600. Link to join is in the description box. Hope this video helped you, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.